Um, I'm Kathy Beard, and I'm the Director of Adult Services in the Norman Williams Public Library in Woodstock, Vermont. And during this hunkering down time, we know a lot of people are turning to books, of course, and reading for comfort, but they're also turning to food and cooking. So we decided to bring you some of the great cooks of Woodstock to have them talk about the, the recipes they like to uh, do and whatever information they have to impart to you. And today we have one of uh, the great cooks of Woodstock who, uh, who has agreed to be our guinea pig. We're starting with Rob Wallace. Rob, thank you so much for, for helping us out here. I really appreciate it. You're entirely welcome. I'm glad to be a guinea pig. <laughs> Um, maybe we can just uh, chat a little bit before you start in. Um, sure. So I had some questions and I'm going to probably ask every great cook. Um, the kinds of things like, when did you get interested in cooking? Was your family always interested in cooking? Hmm. Um, well, I got interested in cooking when I was a little kid. And that was because of my mother and my grandmother. My mother um, and I made bread together. We made Sally Lunn. We made cheese bread. My grandmother, this would be my, me, my maternal grandmother, lived on a farm and uh, she had a garden with everything that is on this great earth. She had asparagus and figs and grapes and every vegetable that you can imagine. And she was a great home cook. She never cooked anything fancy, but the way she spent her day was cooking. From scratch, yeah. Of course. She'd go out and get, get the chicken that we would have for dinner and, and, and keep going from there. Yeah, and, and you're from the South, right? You grew up in the South? Yes, I grew up in Arkansas and Western Tennessee. And actually, that inspires the reason for what I'm going to be cooking today, but I'll get to that in a few minutes. Okay, okay, good, great. Um, do you have a favorite cookbook? Or... Uh, I have two favorite cookbooks. One of them I've had forever. My mother gave it to me. It's called The Joy of Cooking. It's a you big got fat. the original ver version of it? Yes, it's a big fat one and yeah. binding is completely gone now, but yeah. I have it held together with a couple of rubber bands. Yeah. yeah. And I use that because it has such wonderful instruction about what to do if you don't know what you're doing. And the other favorite cookbook that I like is... Uh, Marcella Cucina, which is written oh, by Mar Marcella Hazan. Okay, okay. And it's an Italian cookbook, and I like Italian food a lot. And she is one of the better um, present presenters of, of uh, cookbooks, I would say. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I, I use her in, in my famous uh, minestrone soup. All right. Um, and so what's your favorite go-to meal, you know, like your comfort Chicken. Chicken. Any and way? <laughs> I like it a lot of different ways, but uh, I'll tell a funny story. Um, when my son was living here at home, we had a, a dish that got called dictator chicken. <laughs> and the reason he, we called it dictator chicken was he didn't like it an awful lot, but he got to eat quite a little bit of it because that's what there was. <laughs> So that's one variation on chicken. And the reason I like chicken so well is that my dad wanted to have chicken for dinner every night, every week, every month of the year. Never and, my tired poor, of it. and my poor mother prepared chicken for him faithfully. And I had two choices. I could learn to like chicken or I could hate it. <laughs> so it, it, seemed to be, uh, it seemed to be adaptive for me to learn how to like chicken. So, oh, that's, so that's my, I, I prepared in a lot of different ways. Yeah, that's funny. Um, do you have any tricks that, that you've learned over the years? Um, well, one of the, I wouldn't really call it a trick so much as a skill. Um, deboning poultry uh, takes a little bit of practice and it leads to a lot of different opportunities for cooking. So I can debone a chicken or a duck or a cape, uh, uh, Cornish game hen or a turkey or whatever. And it's a lot of fun actually for me, but I know lots of people don't like to do that. It's when I've tried it, I always have these unrecognizable pieces that, you know, you don't even know where they came from. They're so just 
motion. Yes, fillet of drumstick, yes. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I don't know this question that I, I like this question, but it kind of comes from more books than anything, you know, when, when we interview authors and stuff. But so it's, it's like, do you have, do you know food that's really overrated or underrated or? Well, I think generally speaking, vegetables are underrated in the average home kitchen, at least in America. And um, that I think is for two reasons. One of them is it's not always easy to find good fresh produce, which makes all the difference in the world. And the other reason is that people give short shrift to preparing the vegetables. They're done badly and sure enough, they don't taste great. So I think there's a, there's a world of opportunity cooking vegetables and that also features into what I'm going to be cooking today because yeah. it's, um, it's a version of something that can be pretty awful. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and so that's, I was gonna ask you why you picked this recipe and why don't you tell the name of it and let me just say that we will be including this recipe, Rob's recipe, um, at the end of this um, a video. Okay. What I'm preparing is, is a dish that I call confetti slaw with Asian flavors. And the reason I chose this particular uh, recipe is having grown up in the South, I ate a lot of coleslaw and it was often pretty bad, mostly because it was too sweet. It was made with Miracle Whip salad dressing. And it was also often monochromatic because it was made with nothing but cabbage. And there's a lot of different opportunities for slaw. So confetti slaw is, for two reasons. One, I put a lot of different vegetables in that have different colors so that it's nice to look at. And the other thing is that the pieces are small because big hunks of raw vegetable are often not very easy to digest. So it, it works better to be in small pieces. How long can you keep uh, this? Once you make it, how long can you keep it in the fridge? A couple it'll, days? Yeah, it'll last a few days. It might even last a week, I guess, if your refrigerator works the way it should. I never had that problem, so I'm not sure. Well, so I luckily have had some of this, and it's great. And I actually thought it, it would got better a little bit, you know, like yes. it, it ages just a little bit, you know, like, I mean, it's good to begin with, for sure. sure. But it's nice when it just kind of sits there and, and marinates a little bit, too. Well, I think what happens is that the vegetables begin to absorb more and more of, of what's on them, and, and that helps, of course. Yeah. Okay. So start in here. Ready to roll. So I'm going to adjust <laughs> my, my camera here so that you can see my hands. Okay, good. So first of all, this is a bowl of slaw that I prepared in advance. And it has several different ingredients. It has Napa cabbage, carrot, red pepper, purple cabbage, and fennel. And what I'm going to do is prepare some of each of those vegetables so that you see how they get prepared and add that to this before I dress it. So that's what I'm up to now. So the first item is Napa cabbage. I choose Napa cabbage rather than regular cabbage because it's not quite as tough to eat and it absorbs flavor more easily than cabbage, conventional cabbage. The first thing I'm doing is cutting out the central stem so that that tougher piece of the, of the cabbage is taken out. And you cut it in half lengthwise Turn it over so that it's face down. You got a nice sharp knife there, don't you? Yes, a sharp knife is always a good thing. Do you sharpen and your own knives? I do. And I can also tell you that for people that don't like to sharpen or don't know how to do it very well, that the local hardware store will do it for, I think it's three bucks. It's, oh, really? I didn't know that. It's a great service. Yeah. So after you've, you've prepared this vertically, you do a very fine dice across the vertical pieces. Okay. 
carefully avoiding your fingers. <laughs> Please do. And then that will go in with the rest of the spot. So there, there's your cabbage. Did you did you make this recipe up, or or is this a kind of a uh, something that you've worked with? Oh. I made I made it up. Okay. I've had I've had slaw with lots of different things in it, but my taste in slaw is a little on the tart side, mm -hmm. not so sweet, and I like color in anything that I cook, and so I just picked out the most colorful vegetables I could think of. Next item is carrot. I have a box grater here. Use the largest size and you grate it down. Do you have a mandolin? <clears throat> I don't have a mandolin. There's a version of one right there. Yeah. I find that every time I use one, I cut my fingers off. I know. Oh, well, <laughs> I've done that. <clears throat> I mean, I've not cut them off, but. The other close. thing that I, I would mention is the reason I'm doing all of this by hand rather than with a food processor. Is that the food processor has a tendency to mangle food and make it sort of mushy. I have found that exact thing. Yeah. And so while it takes a little bit longer to do the preparation, it's worth it because the pieces stay fresh. Piece of red pepper, all the pith and seeds have been taken out. Same general process as the cabbage. For color, a piece of purple cabbage. The first thing you want to do is take this big central stem out because it's tough. So you just whack it right out of there. And then the same general process. Do you have a garden? I don't. I have a, a taste for more vegetables than I, than I have talent for growing them. So I go, I'm, I'm a great aficionado of all the farmers markets around. Yeah, right. I used to have a garden, but I don't really have the right situation. I have a north facing house and a very small yard. We just found a big woodchuck near our garden. We uh, didn't know it was there. <laughs> they always find it. <laughs> they always do. Okay, and the last item. It's something that many people don't even know about much. It's, it's fennel. This is a half of a small bulb of fennel. You want to do the same thing about taking out the hard core. Turn it over so the pieces are down. Do you use fennel in a lot of things? I use fennel for slaw. I use fennel sometimes instead of onions with risotto. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. It, ma it makes for a different flavor and it works exactly the same as onions and risotto. Okay. Now here we go with the mixy mixy, I use my hands so that everything gets more or less distributed in an even fashion. And then you wanna add kosher salt. 
That does two things. It flavors it, of course, but it also softens the vegetables. And what I'm using is conventional, just regular kosher salt. And I'll be putting it in in two different doses, one that I've just done and then another once I've tossed it once to distribute the salt through the slaw before I dress it. One of the reasons it gets better as you let it age is the salt is doing its work. Yeah. So you don't have that on your, your recipe, you just so that's just kind of salt, just um, salt a little bit. <clears throat> well, I, I think it's on the recipe, I hope it is. Is it? Oh yes, I'm sorry, you're right. Sprinkle liberally with kosher salt, I didn't. And didn't look up. People have told me that I like salt more than more than most. So you, you need to do that just so that it suits what you like. Okay. Next, we're gonna make some dressing. And that consists of about three tablespoons of mayonnaise, which gives it some nice body and creaminess. Have you ever made mayo? I have. I have too. It's sort of a labor intensive event, isn't it? It is, it is. One tablespoon of Dijon mustard. It's important that it should not be yellow Frenchies of mustard or hot dog mustard. juice of one lemon then an item that I like to put in is pepperoncino because it gives it a little bit of zing and you could leave this out completely if you don't want it but it adds a nice flavor I think so what I've done is cut the, the stem off the pepperoncino and cut it lengthwise use the back of a paring knife Scrape the seeds out so that you don't wind up mangling it when you do that. You want to cut this into an extremely fine mince. Nobody wants a hunk of pepperoncino. Just the flavor, just the touch, huh? Yes. And the hint of it. The reason I put it in the dressing is so it doesn't wind up in one pocket yeah. in the slaw, which would be a terrible thing. My mother used to make mayo and um, <clears throat> and her recipe that she gave me is you get to a certain point and she says, if it curdles, you start over. <laughs> right. Next item, rice wine vinegar. There are two versions that you can find in the grocery store. One of them is seasoned, one of them is unseasoned. Unseasoned is the one you want. Seasoned rice wine vinegar has got a lot of salt in it. And I'm gonna put in about a couple of tablespoons. That's one of the Asian flavors. Toasted sesame oil is another. Mixy, mixy. How long did it take you to perfect this? I mean, this is <clears throat> oh, just experimenting over the years. I started off with just dill pickle, cabbage, and carrot. I didn't quite cut it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I've just little by little done it. And uh, I guess in the last couple of years, I've I've eaten this quite a lot. It goes really well with grilled meats. Uh, it goes well with a cheese sandwich. Beans and franks. Anything. <clears throat> Tacos, I mean, you can put it in a, a taco kind of thing. Yeah. So <clears throat> add the dressing. 
and the quantities you don't need to remember they're on the recipe You're right and this is intended to be more or less the right amount and then you take a, a, a spatula and fold it rather than trying to turn it over with a spoon because it'll make a terrible mess and as you look at it you'll be able to tell when the dressing is pretty well incorporated all yeah, the way through I can, I can even see it you know now it's it's changing yeah i have to say it was really really good <clears throat> Well, we're nearing the end of the summer season, so this would be a blast to send it off right. Yeah. Okay, I think that's just about got it. This is the hard part, just to see it, and not be able to taste it. <laughs> That's one thing we got to get <clears throat> invent it so we can reach in and have a little. <laughs> so there you are. It's beautiful. Con confetti slaw with Asian flavors, yum yum. Yeah, and it really is. I'm here to say, this Good. is beautiful. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Wait, you have to pull your camera up so we can see you again. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye right. properly. Thanks a lot, Rob. You've been a good guinea pig. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Thank you. Bye-bye.